Hello and welcome. I am your host, JP John Poss from the Two Man Power Trip. Of course, joining me is the former WCW and ECW World Tag Team Champion, one of the greatest minds and bookers ever in the history of the business, the Games Master, the Taskmaster, the Devil himself, Mr. Kevin Sullivan. Kevin, how are you doing today, sir? Excellent, JP. How are you doing, my friend? Very good, very good. What do you think about the sure. the world of wrestling right now? Post WrestleMania, the world of wrestling. I think it's doing very, very well, don't you? For sure. I know uh, they had a huge sellout streak going on, but uh, it seems like they're uh, no slowing down as far as right now is concerned. I know The Rock is going to be away a little bit. Roman Reigns is going to be away, but it seems like no slowing down for WWE. No, and they're going to uh, continue this bloodline story, especially since they got uh, Fakusan and Jacob Fatu. I mean, it's going to yes. be... This this is just another chapter going through. Plus, you yep. got Sammy back over, Kevin's over. You, uh, Randy's come back into the fold. Sheamus is back in. Uh, there's so many storylines they're going with. Uh, McIntyre, Rollins. I mean, uh, uh, Becky Lynch, uh, Ripley when she gets her leg fixed. I mean, they, they're they loaded. I don't think I've ever seen a group of this depth of talent ever in the wrestling business. Hey, um, high praise, for sure. I feel like uh, they're definitely on a roll right now. H is doing a uh, pretty good job as Booker. Unbelievable job. Unbelievable job. So I had a couple questions come in, just random questions here, and kind of almost pertains to a little bit, because WWE right now, obviously, you got the Cody Rhodes title, which is the WWE title, and the other title, which is the world title, which Damian Priest holds. What did you think when WCW had two belts? I know it's a little bit before you as far as coming in and booking, but WCW had the big gold belt, which was kind of the world title, sometimes known as the NWA title, sometimes known as the international title sometimes just known as the big goal, but they also had the WCW world title as well. I know right before you came in, Flair and Sting combined the titles and it became just the big gold. But what do you think about that, having two world championships? Well, I think it's confusing, but it's also been not so much in wrestling, but in boxing, how many champions are there in each weight division? You know what I mean? Yeah, geez. Yeah. <clears throat> I saw where Tyson Fury's next match, if he wins, that will be the first time there's been a unification champion, meaning he's won all the belts since Lennox Lewis. Wow. So a couple decades yeah. there. Wow. Yeah. So I, 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 I still don't understand if one's a world champion the other one's the universal champion right yep i don't i don't I, that's the only thing i don't get I meaning how they've positioned their programs do you get that it's weird because Cody's the WWE champion, but then there's also the world champion because Roman combined the titles already and USA complained that they didn't have a champion on the show. So it was it was weird. It almost feels like that's like the Intercontinental title or the secondary title or like the other title. Yeah. Uh, it just... Maybe this is just me. I know, and I hate add more belts to it, but maybe do you make one... The champion of Raw or SmackDown, so they they uh, taking care of their commitments with their network. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it seems like almost like that's what they're trying to do. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I we... mean, I, I think right now too, though, it's almost getting to be a new point that people aren't making a big thing of it because they're rolling so high right now, you know what I mean? And in fact, I think they're buying into it. I, <clears throat> I, I go back to WrestleMania. 
when priests won, they wouldn't have got that pop in the combination of Punk, McIntyre, Rollins, and Priest now, if there wasn't the money in the bank. And I was not a big money in the bank proponent, but it's worked out well for them. And everything they're touching right now is turning to gold. It does seem like having two champs hasn't hurt them really, but it does feel like Cody's like the real champ or Roman was like the real champ. The other's kind of secondary. Do you, do you think with WCW when they had the two champs, that's why they combined it? Because they didn't want to have some like a secondary title. They wanted one major title because there was you know a few years there where they had two champs. Well, I'm just going to assume, like you mentioned, that not knowing what went on, that that's what they did. They didn't want to confuse the people. When WCW did have two champions, like the WCW champion had their the belt, and the you know the world champion, the international champion had the big gold belt. It just felt like okay. I know it's not technically right, but it always felt like whoever the big gold belt was the champion. So when you guys combined it, and then really you you can take over the book, you combine the big gold belt is just the world title. So to me, it's almost sometimes the look of it too. Oh yeah, the look of it, it plays a big role in it. Uh, I would not be surprised if we see a change in. Maybe uh, McIntyre or whoever ends up with that belt. When they sort that out, they may change the look of the belt completely. It seems like they're making all the title belts on Raw have like that big gold belt feel to it. Like the tag titles now almost look like it to a certain extent. The woman's title does to a certain extent. Yeah. So where are we going with that? If you're saying that they all look alike, or yeah, like the Raw brand titles are all going to look alike now, and now the SmackDown titles, it's like they're going in that direction again. Yeah, I think that maybe that's the plan, right? I would think that's the plan. I mean, they're they're so far above wrestling fans minds right now they're so f into the wrestling business the f art of the wrestling business i mean they're doing some calculations and things that we have no idea what they're doing you know i mean they have it down to i'm sure how many t-shirts are sold a day by what uh talent i'm sure they have broken down uh, ratings to minute by minute, probably uh, every half a minute. So our, our take on some of this stuff, we have no idea w what they're doing. And we, we have, we'd have to be a soothsayer to figure out what they're doing now because it's so above any of us, unless we're in there every day and that's our department and we know what's going on. Pretty, it's no longer just the wrestling business it's the business of wrestling now yep yeah it it's crazy to, to think of how they could hyper focus on something if they wanted to and see how they're doing business wise with that um for sure yeah now another question that came in for you uh, interesting, because we were talking to Mr. Perfect a couple weeks ago, Kurt Hennig, obviously, in WCW. They're wondering why Hennig was in the Wolfpack and then out of the Wolfpack. He turned on them, turned heel, and went NWO Hollywood. Was there any specific reason why he didn't stick with the Wolfpack? No. Uh, you know, they were... Scott and, and Kurt were very tight. Kevin was tight with... Uh, Kurt, but Kurt and Scott had been tag team partners in the AWA, and they were really tight. So uh, 
it wasn't uh i think they were just trying to f figure out the best way for kurt to draw money with them whether with them or working against them did you not like hennig at wcw as a baby face would you would you actually prefer him as a heel oh yeah i think he's one of the greatest heels good baby face but that heel thing where he spits the gum out the towel i mean the 300 game bowling, you know, the football, who's, he was just, uh, Minnesota's greatest athlete, right? Absolutely. Yes. It yeah. is funny. Like to think like he, he was a good baby face, but he was so much better as a heel. Just like all that stuff, those skits and everything. It, he just works so much better as a heel. I think. Yeah. I do too. Even calling yourself perfect. Obviously. I mean, that that's a lot of hubris there. I mean, a lot, a lot of cockiness doing that. Right. Right. When you look at Hennig, you definitely were putting him in the wolf pack to have him turn, right? It wasn't going to be a long-term thing. He was just in it to turn on them and turn heel. Yeah, I, I as I'm recalling this, we kind of gave Kurt a free hand to decide what he wanted to do. Because, you know, a guy like Kurt draws money. He knows what to do. You might can help him push him in a direction, but... I definitely thought he needed to be a heel. I um, definitely like him better as a heel, for sure. Good as a face, like I said, but definitely better as a heel. Now, another topic that we hadn't discussed previously, and obviously you know him quite well, but that is the Stinger, a.k.a. Sting. We only really kind of I really touched on it briefly, but he retired from the business at age 64. What did you think when you heard the Stinger was retiring? Was you Were you saying about time, or were you saying, um, you know, this is a, was, was an awesome way to go out? No, oh, it was an awesome way to go out, and I think he was looking forward to retiring. I think he retired. Well, didn't he retire on his 65th birthday? It was right around the corner, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, and they did it the right way with his boys was done well yeah his sons were out there that was really cool and obviously one was wolfpack sting one was old school surfer sting very cool way to do it that's one thing tony Khan may, may have not get a lot of things right but he got sting right i feel like oh absolutely uh, absolutely he got that right i mean uh it's funny when you're on a roll you can't do anything wrong and you're very smart like when they first came up, right? Yes. You fall into a little uh, off a patent, and then you're not quite as smart as you were. I don't buy that. It's just that. The perception of it? So just like the perception that that the you know you got things going right or going wrong maybe. Say that again. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the whole. Like the you're saying maybe the perception of everything is going right or maybe the perception everything what? is going wrong. Not necessarily it actually is. Yeah, I don't think it's actually going wrong, uh, all, all the way wrong, but you're competing. Suppose, just suppose. Take WWE out of the equation. Would people be knocking AEW as much as they do now? It's now they're in a comparison of a race. And just so happens 
that WWE has hit upon some kind of magical pencil that Paul is wielding that's doing an incredible job and everything they touch turns to gold. I mean, they're going to have a sellout in Paris. They're going to have a sellout in Scotland. They're going to have a sellout in Bastion, Berlin. I mean, how can they not look so gigantic right now? And everything they do is lauded and hailed as the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, Tony, to some people, might have made a couple of errors with the punk thing, right? Yeah. Hopefully it's out of the system, right? Yep. But it's, again, comparison. Uh, you, that's why I said it's when you are pushing that snowball uphill and you push it downhill and when it starts to go downhill and take a life on its own, you can make mistakes, but they turn out to be the right thing. So that's that's where uh, what I'm saying. It's just the it's just hard when you're down to get the snowball back on top of the hill. But when you get it on top of the hill and your it starts to roll down, you pick up the momentum and everything you do is right. When you're down on the bottom of the hill, it's hard to push that back up. So yeah, AEW is definitely in the bottom of the hill right now. They're they're struggling. They're they're not doing that great. And hey, it's crazy to think you know with Sting, he's sixty four years old, just turned sixty five. But losing him, it seems like it was a big deal because his show that he did at Greensboro Coliseum drew about sixteen thousand people. Um, people were very very interested in that. And basically, since then. Man, I mean, not that you know he's the end all be all, but he, obviously he was a draw for them to a certain extent, and and they really struggled. They they've got no nobody right now. It seems like even though they have a good roster. Okay, you're saying they 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 don't have nobody over, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. But in yep. one, in basically one swoop, they lost Cody. They lost. Jay Agile, right? Yep. They lost Punk, Andrea. Uh, what's the other kid, Ricky? Oh, Ricky Starks? No, he's still there. Yeah. Oh, he is? Yeah, he just hasn't really been on TV, but he's still there. Okay, but they lost a lot of people, okay? And they also lost Sting, who's been, you know... One of the top drawers in the for the last thirty years, they've lost a lot of people, and yet their talent is superb. So now we go into a, a scientific project here. Does great five star matches draw you ratings? Are the nope. storylines? I think it's more storyline driven for sure. In this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know, I'm just uh, a little baffled by some of the stuff that, that goes on over there. But you're right, losing Sting and losing all those guys was definitely bad. When you look at Sting and his exit, him and Darby were, were the final team. They re wrestled the Young Bucks. Sting and Darby, who were the AEW Tag Team Champs at that point, went over. They did get the win over the Jacksons, Matthew and Nicholas. The Young Bucks it was a 21-minute match. Greensboro Coliseum, like I said, about 16,000 people sold out. They actually had to add in some seats. They did some production kills because they wanted to get as many people in there as possible. So really good business for, for them, for AEW. But the only thing was that was kind of a one-time thing because Sting is 64, going to be 65, and he's retiring, and that's the icon, and he, he's gone. So it was good for one-night business. What can you do after that? They haven't been able to do much after that. So on, on one hand, it's awesome, and everything they did from that night is great. And then after that, it's like, okay, now what? Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I don't know what the answer is to you. <clears throat> no, no idea. It just seems like, um, I don't know, maybe his loss is, is bigger than, than has been uh, speculated. Like, you're thinking about staying in his career. I feel like uh, he was a big draw for them. You didn't feel like he was a big draw? No, I did. I felt like he was a big draw, but there were so many people oh, yeah. online that said that he wasn't. But I don't know, I felt like he was for them. I kind of agree with you. I did too. Did you know how his relationship with Tony Khan started to begin with? Did, did you have any idea? I have no idea. So his son tried out for the Jacksonville Jaguars oh, a few right. years yeah. ago. So that's how he met him. Like people wondering, like, oh, this person must have introduced him. No, he found out that it's Steve Borden's son was trying out for the Jaguars. Obviously, he's a part of the, the organization, Tony, with his dad. Um, right. So that's how he got a relationship with Sting because his son was trying out for the Jaguars. So that's how Sting came to AEW. Wow. That's amazing. Obviously, Tony's a huge fan. He loves Sting. Maybe he would have found out a way to contact him and, and get him in to begin with. But, man, that that's uh, perfect for him. You know, yeah. perfect way to get him in. Hey, you interested in wrestling? Uh, you want to uh, hop aboard AEW? Yeah, that sounds great. That's a great I, You know, that's a storyline in itself. And, of course, his son never ended up making the team. But, uh, you know, that's okay because Tony ends up getting – the stinger to uh, to come to AEW, so it kind of worked out in the end. Yeah, yeah. Now, before I get into you know his debut and all this other stuff, why do people question Sting's love for the business? What is that all about? Have Have you ever noticed a, a question mark as far as Sting's love of the business? I don't know why people would question that. Explain that to me. I don't understand. Explain why they requested that. So, for whatever reason, th they have this in their head that he doesn't love the business, even though he was in the business for forty years. I've heard a few people say that a few of the uh, like Meltzer and even Russo and a bunch of the guys, uh, pundits or whatever you want to call them, journalists, uh, dirt sheet guys, they've said that oh, he he was never a fan. He he does so he didn't love the business because he wasn't a fan. That was like their big point of contention. They, they said, oh, he's, he's just doing this for the money. It's like, well, to stick around for 40 years, I don't know. There's a point where you got to say you got to love – he loves the business, no? I just don't understand how people could say that. That is so far, far, far-flung fantasy. You should have a uh, aluminum hat on your head. <laughs> I mean – the guy got his knees destroyed, right? Pulling off the cage, yep. came back as quick as he could. He was always there when you needed him. I don't understand because maybe he didn't know who Jim Lundis was. Uh, that makes him not a fan. He certainly used to watch the matches when he first started. Uh, I, I don't understand that. I just don't. I mean, I can't even... You've knocked my socks off so bad, I can't commentate on that. Very strange, because I've heard that a bunch. And I said, wait, how is he not loving the business? He literally was in it for 40 years. <laughs> how does that not love? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Always, always surprised. I think because they're trying to create like a narrative that he's like he's like a money guy. He just did it for the for the money. Like it's like they're all trying to create their own narrative, and then they feed that narrative with with whatever story. What he wasn't supposed to get paid. Do you understand like, when you're saying stuff like that? That not you, but people that say yep. that. How bizarre that is. It is strange. Like people always said about Hogan as well. Isn't it a business? You know, and Hogan would always say it, it's a shoot, meaning that he wants to make the most money because it, he's treating it like a shoot, like it's not a work, like he's doing this for real, right. like real money. Right, and it is. The trips were brutal. The matches were tough. I mean, I, I, I this baffles me. Everybody's an expert, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing is, too, with with Sting. Okay, so he 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 could have been out of the business in two thousand and one, came to TNA, 
for a long time, longer than maybe he could have, or really, you know, maybe even should have at one point, but he was great in TNA, stayed there for a while. Then he went to WWE, got inducted to the Hall of Fame, had a t title match, short run, of course, but he hurt his neck. So after he hurt his neck, and he's he's in his 50s now, he hurt his neck, he still comes back and he wrestles 20-something 20, uh, 20 matches, 30 matches uh, for AEW. So, man, just crazy to, to when people say stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't even think we should waste time. Yep. I mean, those are the people that in the Middle Ages were sitting on the, the wall and were watching them fall off. They're adults. They're adults. <laughs> you know, they play with their lips. I mean, God. And they're experts. Oh, yes. please. Yes. Please. So he makes his debut 12 to 2020 in Jacksonville on Dynamite, basically in front of very few fans because COVID, the pandemic was going on, but they did allow some people in because of the outdoor part of that, that stadium in Jacksonville. He makes his debut. He saves Dustin, Cody, and Darby Allen from Team Taz and basically starts his relationship with Darby Allen right then and there. They become joint in the hip. He becomes the mentor to Darby Allen, the protege. And they team a lot going forward. Basically, all his matches are with Darby Allen going forward. They're all tag matches or six man tags or you know multi man matches. Yeah, yeah. No, no singles. But he's really gonna have. Is that the smart way to do it? Do you like that? That that's what they're gonna do with Sting in his last run. Oh, I think it was the. You know. Do you remember the table spot? Oh yeah. We don't want that to happen before he retires, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But he would have got hooked up with the competitiveness to do something like that. And that's what he did. Uh, I think it was really done well. It kind of protected him from himself that he didn't get, and those guys get, especially his partner gets injured, right? And hurt. Oh, yeah. Yep. So I think they did the right thing for sure there. When you look at it, too, it was like an interesting pairing. At first, you didn't kind of know what they were doing, but obviously it's all trying to get Darby over. It's all about the rub of Sting onto Darby. That's all it was to get Darby over. Do you think in that last match, I know we'll, we'll get to it, I just want to, before I forget to mention this, do you think that glass spot was needed in that last match for, with Darby Allen that we jumped off the ladder into the glass? You know, my thoughts are, why do that? If things could have turned very bad. Shards of glass could have went in the audience, could have went in Sting's eye, could have went in Darby's eye, their opponent's eyes. <sighs> why? I was thinking it, obviously, that too, but I was thinking, isn't that going to take away from Sting's moment that he's taking this insane bump? Well... You got to continue on, you know what I mean. But uh, I just didn't like the glass. But that's m my opinion and my taste. Some people might have loved it, so I'm not sure. Man, eventually Darby Allen would get hurt in a match with uh, Jay White, and before he was going to cl uh, climb Mount Everest. So he was not. Uh, he's not doing that. He's out with a leg injury right now. But man, you're right. It could have been worse as far as just an injury at that pay per view at the uh, at the Revolution pay per view. Right, right. When you look at Darby and Sting, do you actually like them? Do you think they mesh well together? Do you think they have good chemistry together? Oh, absolutely. It's like uh, Batman and Robin. I mean, now Robin's going to turn into Batman. I think it was well done. That was one of the things they really did well. If you're booking this, would you put Sting with Darby or would you put him with somebody else? Who would you put him with? Tell me who you put him with. I'm not sure. I, I haven't even really thought about it. I was just thinking if you thought Darby and him was like the kind of, you can't get more perfect than that. You Like you like that combination. Yeah. I mean, they very similar gimmick. Darby's into this time, not saying Sting's not, but he's over for 30 or 40 years. He's a generational star, and you just made the, you just 
gave the anointment to Dobby. So I think it was done very, very well. Do you think that he should have turned on him at all? Do you think Darby should have turned heel on no, Sting or no? No, no. Why not? <laughs> Why? What? 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 Turn? Okay, you turn him heel, right? On Sting. Sting's retiring. What's that going to do? Well, I was thinking maybe Darby goes over him. That's his last match. Darby gets the win. Really put him over. But where do they go from that? Oh, I have no idea. I was thinking maybe Darby gets some sort of big push. Isn't he getting pushed as a baby face? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, before the injury, who knows? Because then he got injured directly right after the Sting match. So probably, right. that's probably where they were going. Right. They were going to be, he was going to take, in my head, Sting's spot. He was going to be this generation's Sting. Who are you going to make this generation sting? Right, I guess it could work for him. Yeah. So you're okay. You're okay with no singles matches for Sting though in, in this run. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that was Sting's call too. His age probably did play a factor. I'm guessing played a factor in in wanting that. You know, he's in his sixties. He probably needs somebody to kind of carry most of the load or at least half the load as far as his wrestling. Yeah, and you your injuries start to uh, wake up with you every morning when you hit that 60 mark. You know what's great about him? Not not that he doesn't look great without the makeup, but the makeup help. You almost forget the and the way he moves. You almost forget that he's 64, 65 years old because of how well he moves and the makeup, you know, you can't tell how old he is with the face paint. Right, right. He's done a mock that was piece. He's been very, very smart. Crazy. Some guys that get to that age, they could barely move. They could barely walk. You know what I mean? And, right, right. And he's he's jumping off, literally jumping off balconies. Well, right, and, and yeah. falling off stuff. Yeah, he's crazy. Taking huge bumps. Well, when did? take all these huge bumps early or at the end of his career i didn't see this at the end did you yep all of his aw matches towards towards the latter part of his career yeah he would jump he was jumping off of balconies he jumped off of um a hot like a high high rise thing onto two tables and the tables collapsed yeah he was ta yeah. oh he took insane bumps in AEW. yeah i saw her at the end but i'm not gonna say those were pre-planned and they were safe those weren't, you know, some of the guys do now, just do something. I'm sure he wasn't going to put himself at risk knowing he was getting ready to retire. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, you... did, he did some great bumps, but I'm sure they had walked through that, made it as safe as they possibly could for him. Can you believe that he would do that? Because, you know, at this point in his career, he's got nothing to prove. He, he doesn't have to do that stuff. Yeah, it's just... Uh, Pride for a guy that doesn't love the business, he sure did some crazy shit not loving the business. <laughs> right. He must love it a little bit, yeah. No, he ain't. I was just, He's just I was just like money. Right, exactly, exactly. I was just surprised that like, okay, he's in his sixties at this point and he's taking some of the bump. He didn't take some of those bumps when he was thirty, you know what I mean? He didn't take like right. off of the balcony stuff and like crazy stuff. Right. Right. You know how they said like he rubbed off on Darby. You know he gave him the rub. I think Darby's craziness rubbed off on Sting. You know what I mean? Like that da uh, daredevil attitude rubbed off on Sting. Yeah, I do too. I do too. He was keeping up with the kid, which was very good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When you look at his run, too, okay, okay, he's not going to be main eventing or anything like that. Obviously, like I mentioned, he's going to be in mostly tag matches with Darby or six mans or you know, multi-man matches with Darby Allen, but he's not going to be necessarily wrestling all top guys or main eventers. Like his first match there was just a street fight on the revolution pay-per-view from Daily Spike Jacksonville in, in 2021. He defeated Brian Cage and Ricky Starks, who are part of Team Taz. So, you know, not really high 
I love that though. He's not, he's staying, he's got a huge name. People are, are interested in him, but he's not really wrestling anybody too high up on the card. Is, is that the smart way to go about it because of his age? Or what do you think yeah, about he's that? A, he's an attraction. You're coming, you're having people come out to see Sting because they know it's getting close to the end. He's a giant attraction. He's, uh, He's giving you, and he's going to rub uh, his, just Dobby having him with him gives Dobby a hell of a run. You put texting on the way out, <clears throat> and that was designed, and I think it was designed very well to end it that way. One thing about staying besides his famous phrase nothing's for sure the one thing though he he would always get a, a good reaction he, like who could sometimes be a little fickle or you know strange with some of the guys that they root for they really showed him respect and always got a big pop when he came out like he was always popular with the aew crowd does that surprise you at all just given the fact that they can be audience no uh he's thin right I mean, he's, he, they grew up watching him. They grew up rooting for him. Yeah. They could be, they could be a strange fan base though. There's, there's no doubt about that. Some of the stuff that they enjoy. Well, they sort of remind me of ECW fan base. How so? Well, do you think that uh, ECW was playing to the mainstream. No, nope. So, do you, that means then you think AEW is playing the mainstream? No, definitely not. No, well, that's why I said they're, they're very similar. I think. Well, I think the ECW fans were a little bloodthirsty. They were, they were, they were nuts. Those those fans. Well, <clears throat> we're talking about. Two incidents of glass, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that is true. He, With he some some guys in, yeah, he, yeah, he you're right. Yeah, was jumping off a balcony. Yep, pulling a new jack. Yep. Uh, Moxley, who I think is excellent, he gets a little juice once in a while. Yes, every match. So, you don't think there's a oh, connecting I the dots? I could see it. I just wasn't yeah. sure where you were going with it, but I, I could see that. What do you think about Moxley being the IWGP World Champion now? He just won the New Japan Heavyweight Championship. I think it's great. It's great. I really like Moxley. Were you surprised at all that he won it? I was shocked. Why were you shocked? Just because he's not a regular there. like, Or maybe maybe he will where, be going where, forward. But where, I was... where did this take place? In Chicago. Chicago. Doesn't that tell you something? Obviously, New Japan and AEW are uh, going to be doing a lot more business together. Right. You knew that going into it, right? Yeah, but I just didn't think he would win because usually in, in the Chicago. IWGP champion. In Chicago? Yeah. You thought he was going to lose in Chicago? Yeah, I, I did, yeah. Because I didn't think he'd be a regular there, so I figured he's not going to win the title. Okay. They may not be regulars there, but who, who, who basically Chicago is their home base, AEW, right? That's where Pretty they much. started. Pretty, Pretty much. much, or is that where they started? And that's where Tony's born, or around Chicago, yeah. Right. I don't think that didn't surprise me at all because of the situation. Now, in Tokyo, it might have been different. Right. Yeah. And something tells me there'll be a rematch in Tokyo, and he won't be leaving with the title. That's my guess. I think that they'll have a rematch at one of the AEW pay-per-views. Where he'll lose, uh, Moxley? Uh, have a controversial finish and then maybe go to Japan and drop it. They could have a series that would last quite a while. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Back to the Stinger. He beats Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky in a, team, in a tag team match with Darby at Double or Nothing. They beat 2.0, which is uh, Parker and Lee in a tag match. They beat FTR in a tag match. They beat the Gun Club. Then on a Dynamite Holiday Bash episode, 
FTR and MJF lose to Darby Sting and CM Punk, who donned the uh, the face paint that face night, paint, yeah. which was which was cool and obviously a big big sign of respect. You don't hear too much disrespect for Sting. You don't really hear too many people say anything bad about Sting as far as in the business. Am I correct on that? Well, yeah, you're correct unless you're one of the people who say he 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 just was in it for the money. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, but I mean like the actual wrestlers, not the not oh, those people, oh, like the actual no. wrestlers. The wrestlers admire him, and rightfully so. Then Sting and Darby defeated the acclaimed in a uh, tornado match. Sting, Darby, and Sammy Guevara defeated Andrade, Cassidy, and Matt Hardy. In a, uh, another tag team match, Darby, Shingo, and Sting defeated the Bullet Club, Phantasmo, and the Young Bucks. Darby, Sting, and Miro defeated the House of Black. Darby ah. and Sting in a tag match defeated the House of Black. Darby and Sting also defeated Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. Then we go to Japan. It was Great Muda's final match. Well, really, final bye-bye. One of his last matches. It was a big show for Pro Wrestling Noah at the Yokohama Arena in Yokohama, Japan. Darby, Sting, and Great Muda defeated Hakushi, Marafuji, and Akira. So, uh, pretty awesome to think that Muda and Sting, and this was last year, this was 2023, but to think of Sting and Muda together one last time, for, and this time in Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah this time. Yeah, it was great. It was great. They were a big draw together, so it was wonderful to see that. Very cool that uh, Sting was a part of that because obviously he was part of Muda's final tour, and Muda, Sting was a huge part of getting Muda over and a huge part of his career. Really, I feel like helped get Muda over here in the States. Right. He did. One thing about Sting that is almost uh, underappreciated, he got Muda over, right? He, big time. He got Vader over big time. He got Cactus Jack over. Those are some three pretty damn big names in the business that yeah. uh, kind of went went through the Stinger and he helped get over. Yeah, he did. He Do certainly you, did. You agree with that assessment that I'm making, that he got yeah. those, helped get those guys over? Oh, without doubt he helped get them over. Then Sting, Darby Allen, Orange Cassidy defeated Kip Sabian, and the Butcher and the Blade. Darby, Sting, Orange Cassidy, and Keith Lee defeated the Mogul Embassy. There is another so New Japan AEW we, show that he was in. We can yes. run down this uh, lineup. He didn't lose, did he? Nope, that, that's what I was getting to. He he never yeah. lost. Undefeated yeah. in AEW won, won all of his matches. Yeah. Do you like that? Absolutely. I mean, it was good on the card. It wasn't a main event. It helped people to elevate. He was an attraction. He became an attraction at the end. Uh, when the Giant was an attraction, did he lose? No. Rare or rarely, yeah. yeah. Okay. One of the biggest mistakes WWE ever made was beating The Undertaker. At WrestleMania, right? Yep. So you gotta when a guy's an attraction, you want the people to go home feeling happy with that match. You can't do it on the main event. You have to have heat. And eventually you pay it off, but you can't have an attraction. That attraction spot is to make people feel good. For them to get a pop for their superhero to go over it and defeat the villain. So you're saying don't beat the attraction ever, though? You don't want to ever have him lose? Why would you beat him? I don't know, maybe get, really get somebody over? Okay. If his spot is to make people feel happy, right? This is just my opinion. If his spot is to make it, people feel happy, then they go and see him. Next time he comes to town, are they going to be reluctant to go and see him? Possibly, yes. You Maybe you didn't pay to watch him lose. Well, you want to get that good time feel. I, I always go back to boxing. What was Ali's last six fights? He didn't have a knockout. And there was fights that we would turn our heads on decisions. The Kenny Norton's, uh, uh, 
Jimmy Young because he's Ali. We didn't pay to see Ali at the end get beat. When he first started, we did, but not at the end because he was Ali. An attraction got to be taken care of in a special way. He got to that position because he connected with the people. He's going out, the people know it. He's got a limited time left. You're going to be the guy that makes the people feel happy. That's a good point. What about it when they're retiring? Do you do, because in, in this instance, the Young Bucks lose. Still no? Still don't? Do you still don't want to beat them? Do you know how much flack Tony would have gotten? If the Young Bucks aren't over by now, beating Sting isn't going to help. Because here's the main thing, JP. Where's the payoff if he retires? They just right. beat. They just beat a guy that's sixty-five years old and retired. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we overthink this. You I actually I mean? like. I actually like what they said after uh, Sting retired after they lost. They didn't mention the loss. They just go, "Oh, we retired him. He's not. He won't wrestle here anymore." Like they just played it up like heels, and obviously the crowd got angry, saying, "You know, you lost. What do you mean they're not here anymore?" Like, nope, we retired him. Yes, they did a great job. They did what a heel's supposed to do. Looking back to, they want it all in London. So you got that that big pop, you know, pop Sting in front of that, that huge crowd over there. He got the team with Edge, which Edge was apparently said that Sting was the reason he got into the business. It was a huge, I guess, grew up in, uh, I know he's from Canada, but he, he did grow up a lot, I guess, in North Carolina for whatever reason. But he was a huge Sting fan. Um, I know he lives in North Carolina now, but huge Sting fan as well. Jericho got the team with him. So kind of got a bunch of, you know, quote unquote legendary guys that got the team with him too on the way out that I'm sure might have been on their bucket list or something that they wanted to do that. I'm sure they said to Tony, like Jericho or Edge has that type of uh, sway with like, hey, we really want a team with Sting. Right, right. Which is, which I think is cool. But basically, I think he was 28 no in AEW, all, all you know, multi man matches, but he was undefeated, goes out on top, goes out beating the Bucks at the Revolution pay per view. Was The pay per view was wrapped around him, so it was all about him. His kids were out there. Tony, you know, as much as he'd done some crazy things, he did that right. Yeah, it was very good. Very good. We're going to miss thing. Now, looking back, and obviously, you know, we, we've talked about him plenty on the show. We talked about his WW run on a prior episode. We're talking right. about, you know, his final crusade here, his final run, his retirement here. What's his legacy? What? How could you wrap Sting up? And, and what's his stamp or legacy on the business? He's one of the greatest of all times. Where do you rank him on the all-time list? You can't. You can't do that. I'll give you an example why you can't do that. You may know who Jim Londis is, right? Yes. Okay. Do you think many people know who Jim Londis is? Not a chance. Nope. Okay. Do you, would they be shocked to know that he drew more money than anybody till this day in the history of the business? They would be shocked. Yep. Okay. So how do you not even know who he is and he's not... And during the Depression, he was drawing 35,000 people to Comiskey Park, to uh, Braysfield in Boston, to uh, every big outside uh, uh, Yankee Stadium. Think about that, Yankee Stadium. So where I'm going with this is every era has their guys. Certainly... He reaches up to the top 10 from the 80s through his retirement. I love that. I agree. Yeah. It's funny yeah. with Londos. I mentioned that him to somebody because I said, oh, he's one of the biggest draws. And they said, never heard of him, blah, blah, blah. But I was talking to somebody who really knows the business. And they said, you'd have to put like different um, Mount Rushmore's together and just, like you said, put him in age 
like brackets, like, hey, 20s, 30s, 40s, Londo's in, yeah. is in it, Fez is in it, you know, certain things. And like, you almost have to break it off. But I was surprised that some people that actually follow wrestling didn't know who Londo's was. I was like, wow, you guys got to uh, look at the biggest draws ever in the business, Londo's. Uh, and, and going back to not only did they not know that, they didn't know a promoter from Boston ran the whole North America. It wasn't a McMahon. It was Paul Bowser. He had his own champion, AWA champion, which the NWA allowed him to have. Think about that. Uh, one of Crazy. the rings that Luthez had was being AWA champion. So, you know, it's it's crazy. It's a, a very uh, mixed blend of professional wrestling, what it's done. And that's why I don't think you can compare anybody, the four guys. They have to be, like you said, from... 20s, 30s, and 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, the 80s, 90s, 2000s, yeah. Because you don't want to leave guys out that really paved the way. Yep. Hey, yeah. didn't I just see your buddy Tom Burke on TV uh, last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, very, he, he's a real knowledgeable guy. I mean, he, sends, he just sent me some programs that were from the 30s. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 I knew you'd get a kick out of seeing him. I knew it. Yeah. 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 He's, he's a good guy. Let's wrap this well, bad boy up. You follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Two Man Power Trip. Kevin, what do you got going on in this crazy world? I'll be in Minneapolis this weekend for the Comic Con. So come on out and say, see me and say hello. Tell us. Tell me how me and John are doing, okay? Awesome. Sounds great. Thank you, everybody out there, for listening. See you right back here next time. Have a good one, folks.